So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Umar Mukhtar. I'm a 28 year old musician. I'm born in a very business oriented family. And nobody in my family ever before had any inclination towards the arts or music. And I became the first, first specimen to do something like this. My great grandfather, it's told that he was somewhat into poetry. And I don't think it was really too much love for poetry. It was mostly to do with, he actually got caught with one of his neighbor. And uh, since poetry is the language of romance, so he got the tag of a poet with him. My grandfather migrated from India to Pakistan. He was the third, he opened the third petroleum station here in Lahore. After his death, my father, who was still 23 years old, inherited the business. Responsibilities were put on his shoulders. He had to suddenly take care of an entire family. He was left with a widow mother, two sisters and a business which was up for the vultures to grab. But he succeeded in that. And then God gifted him with a son who would aspire to be a musician and you know tarnish all the dreams and hopes he had to keep his legacy going. And then my father, I was three years old, my father gifted me the most amazing backstory any musician can have, which was that he banned music for me. Yeah. And, uh, but I used to secretly listen to music with my mother till the age of seven. And then, Hua Kya Ke Atif Aslam released Adat. And, yeah. And you can't keep it a secret anymore because when Atif Aslam goes, you have to sing that with him. And um, obviously, I had to confront my father now that I have a liking of enjoying music and uh, I think so it was my cute looks that he agreed to me. <laughs> but I was now allowed to enjoy music publicly in my home. Then my parents put me in Aitzen College. For those of you who know anything about Aitzen, one thing that it's known for is that it provides a lot of facilities regarding sports to its students. And uh, if you still haven't figured it out, I'm not that, I'm not that kid. I mean, when I was recess in sports, I would be somewhere under a tree doing ah. Uh, yeah, so that was me. And uh, my parents still wanted to, you know, they still wanted that I should be you know, at least somewhat sporty, do some form of sports. So they, uh, they had a whole plan for me each summer. Uh, it went something like this, that every morning we would wake up at 4, at 5 uh, I had to go for riding. At 9 a.m. Uh, we had swimming classes, at 12 I would go to my dad's uh, office. And at 5, uh, we, I think we had tennis, yeah. I had tennis classes and at 6, 7, I'd come back home and repeat it. And as the years passed by, I slowly, slowly, Ram Ram se aap se dur karta ra. So now my parents are worried that this is not a hobby. It's not in academics, it's not in any sport. So what do they do? It's not a hobby. Honi so they made a decision which my mere abu would regret. He bought me a guitar at the age of 13 and that guitar became my destiny and I immediately somehow divinely knew okay this is something that I would want to do my entire life I I was still 13 and I started writing my own songs and us time pe ye sochna ke you know original songs honge to he you would succeed as an artist was something definitely divine not something that I did 
Khair, I started writing my own songs. After three years, I got the opportunity to perform on a stage. And then overnight, my story changed. I became a success in my own school. I turned from somebody, no, somebody who was a nobody to the most popular kid in school. Uh, the principal became my fan. And I'm not uh, lying when I say this. Because I was the only child in my school who was allowed to bunk by the pr principal's permission. And uh, yeah, so I had all the perks that you have with the musician stardom that you can suppose one has. And I was enjoying it. I was going from one school to the other. I was uh, banging all the awards, becoming a heartthrob among the girls and uh, just enjoying everything. And somewhere my father in my home was planning something else for me. So if anybody here has watched Three Idiots Ever, so there is this scene where one of the characters is, uh, wants to become a photographer and uh, the father goes something like almost uska sara ek replicated version real life mein ho raha tha. So, bada emotional scene hota tha, ghar pe ladte sara kuch hota tha. Eventually, wo ladai ye sixth tenth ki hoti thi ke my mother and my sister they had to step in and uh, they had they had to become the Kurbani Ka Bakra for me so that I could pursue my dream and they, they both enrolled in Chartered Accountancy and now they both are Chartered Accountants. Uh, I would especially here want to point out uh, my mother's effort because she, she conceived me when she was 18 and she took a break from her education and the break was more like a full stop, like how Pakistanis back in the 1990s women used to be like. And after 18 years, she decided to restart her education and she took upon a challenge like chartered accountancy and not only took upon it, she succeeded in it. So a huge round of applause for her. So now, my sister and my mother are both wonderful ladies are now enrolled in Chartered Accountancy. My father has dropped his weapons. He's like, Kushni ho sakta iska. So I still remember this is a Sunday morning, 2015. I got my first record deal and uh, we, we were sitting on our terrace having, the, having our usual breakfast. And he said to me, Ke, Umar, know that I would probably not understand what your career is. It's beyond my understanding. But know this that I will always support you. That I, I will always be there for you. If you ever fall down, I will be there to pick you up. And that your sister is now definitely the favorite child. <laughs> so, I was like, fine. <laughs> So, Khair, I, I became a professional music musician. I would experiment from one style to the other. I would uh, go from one valley to the other. I would fail and then fail again. And then I would look back at my father to see if he still is holding my back for me. And yes, there he was. He was always there. And uh, I would also look back to ask for money because I needed it for my next failure. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that's like how my life was. And to sum it, the only thing that I would say to you guys is that if there is anything you can learn from it, is to not give up. Because whenever I would think about giving up, I would look at my mom's story. Because she, after a gap of 18 years, restarted her education and going to an institute where the students were of her son's age and to not give up in that situation, why would I give up? I would look at my father's situation and for somebody like him to argue with his son every night and not give up on him 
and to keep trying to convince him or which he failed but it's fine to convince him somehow that you know you need security in your life how a father would be be like so yeah you should not give up on your dreams and uh, you should dream big you should hope for better things in life and baki i'm an entertainer if you want any form of entertainment for me that's what i do <laughs> I'm not usually made for lectures by the way but I hope I inspired you somehow